On the South Vietnamese and American side, throughout the last quarter of 1971, American and South Vietnamese intelligence predicted that the North Vietnamese were making no special effort for 1972. Intelligence had a network of sensors and scouts all throughout the Ho Chi Minh Trail, ready to detect any men and materiel moving down to South Vietnam. There wasn't any change, and it stayed that way up until the end of November. Then, in December, Allied intelligence suddenly sent shocking reports. A massive tank park was discovered in Laos, near what US analysts called Bat Lake. This was the largest concentration of armor discovered from the North Vietnamese up to this point in the war. The sensors and reports went haywire. Massive amounts of North Vietnamese soldiers and materiel were heading down south. While the North Vietnamese typically tried to obscure the flow of men and equipment down the Ho Chi Minh Trail, the sheer volume of tanks and trucks was impossible to hide. The North Vietnamese were planning something huge for 1972. But would it be like Dead 1968 where all locations in South Vietnam were hit? Or would it only be an i core Or possibly i core and 2 core Would it take place during the Dead holiday again in February? The key questions were when and where, and it was impossible to know until it actually happened. These questions were definitely being asked in 3 core Many soldiers hoped that the brunt of the offensive would take place in I and 2 core The leftovers would attack them, if they decided to attack there at all. 3 Corps was further away than I Corps or 2 Corps, so there was the possibility that it would not be attacked if the North Vietnamese decided to only launch an offensive in the first two regions. Lieutenant General Nguyen Văn Minh commanded Military Region 3 and was advised by Major General James Hollingsworth and his deputy Brigadier General John McGifford. Hollingsworth was a true American, aggressive and blunt. He was absolutely crucial in advising General Minh's command of 3 Corps. The entire region of 3 Corps had three regular Arvin divisions protecting it. More specifically, Saigon. The 5th Division protected Saigon from the north, the 25th from the west, and the 18th the east. Anywhere the enemy attacked throughout the area, a different division would have to take responsibility for it, which was exactly what each division commander was anxious about. From north of 3 Corps, the People's Army of Vietnam could strike from Phuc Long, Binh Lom or Tainan provinces. The largest population center between these three provinces was Tainan. Because of this, previous communist attacks usually took place there, with the hope that the people would rise up and join them. If Tainan was attacked, then that would be the responsibility of the 25th division. However, if Phuc Lom or Binh Lom provinces were attacked, then that would fall under the responsibility of the 5th. Each division commander hoped that they would not be the main target. Opposing General Min was Lieutenant General Tran Văn Cha, B2 front commander in the People's Army of Vietnam. He would become quite famous after the war for publishing a series of volumes which revealed how Hanoi overestimated its own capabilities and led to the failure of the Tet Offensive. He was put under house arrest for the rest of his life. However, in 1972, he was commanding the equivalent of a communist army corps. Three infantry divisions, the 5th commanded by senior colonel Boi Thanh Văn, the 7th commanded by colonel Dan Văn Nguy, and the 9th commanded by general Nguyen Thoi Bung, plus an additional four independent infantry regiments reported directly to him. Alongside the infantry were specialty troop units, including tank battalions and an artillery division which included dedicated anti-aircraft units. While the 5th and 9th Divisions were formerly National Liberation Front Divisions, at this point in the war, their personnel were mainly North Vietnamese. The North Vietnamese clearly knew their enemies did not know which province they would attack. Previously, communist forces focused on Tainan province since there was a large population center there, but this time, they decided to strike Binh Long. Looking at a population density map, the population of Binh Long was only 77,000 as of February 1972 compared to the 396,000 of Dai Ninh. Its two northern towns, Lop Ninh and An Lop, only had 4,000 and 15,000 people living in them, respectively. It did not have the population of Dai Ninh, so an attack there seemed unlikely, which is why this time, the communists chose it. But Binh Lom had something that Dai Ninh did not. Quốc Lộ 13, or National Highway 13. It ran straight through the province, through Binh Yung province below it and straight to Saigon. 
If the People's Army of Vietnam managed to take Binh Long, they had a highway right into their enemy's capital. Additionally, Highway 13 was the only road between An Lop and the Arvind 5th Division's headquarters at Lai Khe. If it could be cut off, any units north would be completely stranded. As well, since Binh Long province was so sparsely populated, its defenses were quite underdeveloped. An Lop itself was barely fortified, it only had some bunkers and a dirt mound around it. Because of these factors, the communist attack was planned out as follows. To take advantage of Arvin not knowing where they would attack, the 24th and 271st independent regiments would first hit Dainin as a diversion. Then the 5th NLF division would capture Lop Ninh. The 9th NLF division would take An Lop. The 7th Pavin division would cut Highway 13 south of An Lop to cut off the city. All of these divisions, each containing roughly 10,000 men each, would move simultaneously and achieve their objectives within 5 to 10 days. Supporting these infantry divisions was the 69th Artillery Division, equipped with 122mm howitzers, 107 and 122mm rockets, and mortars. It also had the internal 271st Anti-Aircraft Regiment, armed with 12.7mm, 23mm, and 37mm anti-aircraft guns. Almost 4,000 men were in this division. Two battalions of the 203rd Tank Regiment and the 202nd Special Weapons Tank Regiments would spearhead the assaults along with the infantry. They were equipped with the Soviet T-54 and Chinese Type 59 main battle tank. These tanks were accompanied with PT-76 amphibious light tanks and other mechanized vehicles. All of these armored vehicles had never been used this far south before. Additionally, the infantry were armed with a brand new SA-7 Strela heat-seeking missiles perfect for countering the helicopters and light attack aircraft that the US Air Force and Vietnam Air Force were equipped with. At this point, the war had completely changed. Just in this location alone, there were about 35,000 men armed with some of the best weaponry the communist world could muster, all aiming to seize the province of Binh Long. American and South Vietnamese forces definitely did not know what was coming. Facing the brunt of this core level offensive was the 5th Arvin Division and its commanding officer, Brigadier General Le Van Hung. The 5th was charged with guarding Phuc Lom, Binh Lom, and Binh Yung provinces. The headquarters was based out of Lai Khe. The 5th Division had three infantry regiments under its command, the 7th, 8th, and 9th Regiments. At the northernmost province of Binh Lom, the 9th Regiment, under the command of Colonel Nguyen Gong Binh, was deployed around the Lop Ninh area. Two of its battalions and two of its artillery batteries were based out of Lop Ninh itself. Two companies from the 2nd Battalion, along with two 155 and four 105mm guns, were located at the Gamle Bridge between Lop Ninh and An Lop. An additional two infantry companies from the 9th, the 1st Armored Cavalry Squadron, a battery of 105mm and 155mm howitzers, and the 74th Border Ranger Battalion were located at Fire Support Base Alpha, right next to the Cambodian border, called Task Force 15. The last 9th Regiment Battalion was deployed in Phuc Lom Province. The 7th Regiment was based out of FSB-1 west of An Lop. The base had two 155mm and four 105mm guns. Two of its 1st Battalion companies were located at Quân Lai on the other side of An Lop with two 105mm guns. The 8th Regiment was deployed in Binh Yung Province, south of Binh Long. Advising the 5th Division was Colonel William Miller with a team of 15 to 20 advisors also located in Lai Khe. Each of the three regiments had their own advisor teams of 2 to 5 men. Unfortunately, Colonel Miller and General Hung did not have a very good relationship. Due to the structure of South Vietnam's armed forces, each province had its own military structure. It did not command formal Arvind men, but rather regional forces and popular forces, nicknamed the Rough Puffs, paramilitaries that were trained for pacification. This force was commanded by the province chief, Colonel Tran Bun Yud, who was regarded quite well as commander. He had around 2,000 men, a platoon of V-100 cars, and a single 105mm cannon platoon spread all throughout the hamlets in the province. Another advisory team of 20 advisors, led by Lieutenant Colonel Robert Corley, supported Colonel Nyut. 
With the communist buildup in Cambodia, South Vietnam did not just stand still. Seeing the probable strike against either Dai Ninh or Binh Long, Task Force 52 was formed on March 21st and sent to Binh Long. It was made of several units from the 18th Division, the 2nd Battalion of the 52nd Regiment and the 1st Battalion of the 48th Regiment. There was also the Intel and Recon Company, one battery of 105mm guns and a platoon of 155mm howitzers, and B Company from the 18th Engineers. This group was known as Task Force 52 and was based out of twin fire bases, FSB North and FSB South, west of Anlop. It had roughly a thousand men and was deployed under the operational control of the 5th. Altogether, about 15,000 South Vietnamese soldiers would face the 35,000 man offensive. They just didn't know how big it would be, and their commanders hoped that they would be spared from the destruction when the People's Army of Vietnam went for Tainan instead just like they always did.